वेरी गुड इवनिंग आस्पिरेंट्स वेलकम टू द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर अनालिस ब्रॉट यू बाय शंकर आई ए एस अकेडमी टूडे इज डेट इज एटीन ऑफ अक्टोबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री डिस्प्लेड हिस्ट ऑफ न्यूज आर्टिकल्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे सो विदउट मच डिले लेट एस गेट इन टू द न्यूज आर्टिकल डिस्कशन लुक एट दिस इमेज इन द फ्रंट पेज ऑफ डेले एडिशन द इमेज पोर्ट्रेज अ सी नियर पुदुचेरी टर्निंग रेड ड्यू टू एलगल ग्रोथ सम ऑफ द क्रिटिक्स से दैट This condition was due to the abundance of algae as a result of more nutrient in the water. See this phenomenon is only called red tide or algal bloom. So in this news article discussion we shall see in detail about what is this red tide. So what is a red tide? See red tide is also called algal bloom. Since the algal growth causes the water to appear red, it is known as red tide. Now the red color in the water is due to the red color of dinoflagellate algae. when this red colored dinoflagellate algae grow in excess they make the water to appear in red color this is why this excess algal growth is called red tide so what causes this red tide see basically it is caused by excess accumulation of nutrients in water bodies this excess nutrient lead to explosive algal growth This process of nutrient enrichment in water bodies is called eutrophication. Excess nutrients from sources like agricultural runoff, sewage discharge and industrial processes provides enough nutrient base for the rapid growth of harmful algae. So the eutrophication is the major cause of algal bloom. So usually red tides occur more in the west coast of India than the eastern coast of India. Why this phenomenon occurs like this? This is because of several reasons we shall see them one by one first is the upwelling zone so the west coast of india near the arabian sea experiences seasonal upwelling here upwelling is nothing but a process where cold nutrient rich water from the deep ocean rises to the surface these nutrients like nitrate and phosphate support the growth of phytoplankton this in turn encourages algal bloom second important reason is the influence of monsoon See during the southwest monsoon the west coast receives heavy rainfall which leads to the runoff of nutrients from the land into the sea this further contributes to the nutrient load in coastal waters and favor algal blooms third reason is temperature and salinity see the west coast generally has warmer and less saline water compared to the east coast this combination of temperature and salinity in the west coast waters is suitable to algal growth lastly geographical features also influence the growth of algal bloom see the west coast has many coastal indentations and self areas than the east coast This enhances the retention of nutrients and favors the development of algal blooms. These are all some of the important points that you have to remember about red tide, what causes it, and why red tide occur more in west coast of India than the eastern coast. So these learned points. Now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. It talks about the Theosophical Society and the related controversies. We all know that Annie Besant was a prominent leader of this organization. She played an active role in our freedom struggle. Know that the Home Rule League movement was the brainchild of Besant. So through the Home Rule League movement, Annie Besant also played an important role in our freedom struggle. So instead of learning about Home Rule League movement in a usual way, we shall try to understand home rule league movement in a mains perspective for that i have a question for you let me read out the question the question is focus the objective of home rule movement and its major contribution to the freedom struggle of india why did the movement fade out by 1919 explain see whenever the keyword explain is given in the question you are expected to give a clear account as to how or why something happened So as a candidate here you are expected to clear with relevant facts and implications. So in the introduction you can write about the basics of home rule movement. You can also mention a brief history of the movement in the introduction part. For example you can say that the home rule movement 1916 to 1918 in India was an important milestone in the Indian freedom struggle. It was India's response to the First World War and its associated Miseries like 
inflation, poverty, etc. Moreover, it demanded the right to self-rule or home rule within the British Commonwealth. The movement took inspiration from the Irish Home Rule League. Some of the important leaders of the movement are Bala Gangadhar Tilak, Annie Besant, G.S. Kaparde, Subramanya Iyer and Muhammad Ali Jinnah. So this could be your introduction. So now moving to the main body of the question. Here you can see that the question is very simple and structured. In the first part the question asks you to enumerate the objectives of home rule movement and the significance of the movement. Now in the second part we are asked to write about the decline of the movement. So we are going to write the body of the answer in this way as well. First we shall see the objectives of the home rule movement. Some of the objectives of the home rule movement includes first to achieve self-government or home rule in India. Secondly to promote political education and discussion in India. Thirdly to increase self-esteem among Indians so that they will speak against the government's oppression. And finally to demand a larger political representation for Indians from the British government. Now this demand is very natural because Indians actively supported British in World War I. So these are all the objectives of the movement. Now after mentioning all these objectives you can write about the significance of the movement. Firstly this movement was at the center of transition in India's freedom struggle. That is the movement was at the center of changing from prayer petition based struggle of the moderators to Gandhian phase of struggle which are broadly mass based. So to put it in simply, it shifted the movement towards the common people and served as a base for future Gandhian struggles. This is the first major significance of the movement. Secondly, it was widespread than any previous movement. Know that with the setting up of two leagues by Balagangadhar Tilak and Annie Besant, this effectively covered the whole of India. It also bridged the rural-urban divide. So this is the second significance. Thirdly, the movement helped spread political awareness across the country. Know that Annie Besant, through writing in New India, advised members to promote political discussions, establish libraries, create awareness among the people of India in the support of home rule. This is the third important significance. Fourthly, the movement gained significant support from educated Indians with approximately 40,000 members in the combined league by 1917. Then many members of Congress and the Muslim League joined the Home Rule League. It includes many important leaders like Motilal Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru, C.R. Das, Muhammad Ali, Jinnah and etc. So the movement briefly united moderators, extremists and the Muslim League and created a solidarity. Sixthly, it created the cadre of leaders like Nehru who led the future movements of Indian freedom struggle. Finally, the significant achievement of the movement was influencing the Montague Declaration of 1917. See, this declaration recognized the inclusion of more Indians in the government and the development of self-governing institution and etc. So, the Home Rule movement forced the British to accept the rights of Home Rule of Indians. So these are all some of the significance of the moment that you can mention in the first half of the answer. Now coming to the second part of our answer, this part asks us to write about the reasons why the movement declined in 1919. See the first and foremost reason was the lack of effective organization of the movement. As we know that the movement has two branches and it got subdivided to even grassroots levels. But the problem was with their lack of coordination, common ideology and structure. It was evident in the success of various Gandhian movements like non-cooperation movement, civil disobedience movement and etc. Secondly, retraction of moderates. See, the moderates joined home rule movement after the arrest of Annie Besant. But when the government announced the Montague Statement of 1917, the moderates were appeased by the reforms of the government and withdrew from it. This is the second reason. Thirdly, the Montague Chelmsford reforms of 1918 further divided the leaders of the country. Know that Annie Besant herself had doubts regarding the continuation of the league. It was because of the announcement of the reforms. So this is the third reason. Fourthly, lack of effective leadership. See, Bala Gangadhar Tilak 
went for England in September 1918 due to a libel case and Annie Besant was not able to provide clear leadership due to her dilemma regarding the reforms since both the leaders were not functioning effectively the home rule movement was left without a leader and finally the arrival of Mahatma Gandhi and his methods of ahimsa attracted a large section of people it ultimately led to the sidelining of home rule movement from the indian politics so these are all some of the important reasons why the home rule movement declined so with the conclusion this question will be completed in the conclusion part you can write about the significance of the movement like it played an active role in politicizing the people of india moreover it bridged the rural urban divide and it did spread the message of home rule to all parts of india so overall home rule movement created an environment which was the base for all gandhian mass movements which ultimately led to the freedom so this could be a better conclusion if you could write the answer even more better than this model answer you can post that in the comment section so that your peers will also get an another perspective so with this we shall wind up this mains answer discussion and we shall move on to the next news article take a look at this news article this news article talks about landslides according to the news article kerala forest department is planning to prevent landslides along the kochi danuskodi national highways in munnar for this purpose they are going to plant bamboo trees along the road and mountain sides So this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us quickly revise about what are landslides their types and important measures to prevent them so what are landslides see landslides are a geologic phenomenon where large masses of earth rock or debris move down a slope landslides can vary in size from small localized slides to large catastrophic events that can destroy entire communities they are largely relevant in hilly or mountainous ranges where the risk of landslides is higher landslides are a major cause of natural disasters worldwide they are responsible for an estimated 25000 deaths each year so what are the types of landslides see there are various types of landslides depending on the type of movement of materials firstly slump it is the slipping of one or several units of rock debris with a downward rotation see this backward rotation is with respect to the slope over which the movement takes place second is debris slide it is the rapid rolling or sliding of earth debris without backward rotation of mass third is creep it is a very slow and continuous down slope movement of soil and rock it is often unnoticed but can cause long term damage to structures fourthly rock fall see these are suddenly and fast moving events where individual rocks or boulders detach and fall from a steep slope they are fast movement of rocks down a slope and the fifth type is rock slides in rock slides a mass of rock either with or without soil they slide down a slope it is typically slower than a rock fall okay apart from this there is one more type in this landslide which is called lahar it is the mud flow or debris flow that originates on the slope of a volcano this is usually triggered by heavy rain eroding volcanic deposits sudden melting of snow and ice due to heat from volcanic vents or the break out of water from glaciers so these are all some of the important types of landslides that you have to remember so now moving on to the measures to prevent landslides see the first important measure that we can do is slope stabilization slope stabilization is nothing but strengthening unstable slopes using techniques like a retaining wall terracing or rock bolting to prevent slope failure secondly bringing vegetative cover like promoting the plantation of vegetation on slopes this can prevent landslides this is because the roots help to bind the soil and stabilize the slopes so in today's news article we saw about kerala forest department's idea to plant bamboo on the road side right so bringing a vegetative cover will prevent landslides that is why they are planning to plant bamboo trees now the third way to prevent 
landsliders erosion control see implementing erosion control measures like silt fencing and mulching can also prevent the removal of soil by water runoff finally land use planning will be a better preventive method we can enforce land use regulations and restrict construction in landslide prone areas this can prevent the damage caused by landslides so these are all some of the important points that you have to remember about landslides this can be asked as a question in disaster management so just make note of it so these learned points and let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this front page article yesterday a five judge bench of the supreme court delivered a judgment on the legality of same sex marriage the judgment was delivered with a 3 is to 2 majority majority of judges held that only legislature has the power to regulate and recognize same sex marriage the judges observed that there is no fundamental or any other legal rights in india that allows the same sex marriage therefore majority of judges said that the legal recognition to same sex marriage can only be granted by enacting the law this is the crux of the news article given here so in this news article discussion we shall understand the arguments for and against same sex marriage so what is a same sex marriage it refers to marriage between two people who belong to the same gender or sex for example a marriage between two men or two women know that same sex marriages have been legally recognized in more than 30 countries across the globe some of such countries include us england canada australia brazil france and so on but in india the same sex marriage are not currently legal the legal system of our country does not recognize same sex marriages this is because our indian law define marriage as a union between a man and a woman see before 2018 same sex relationship that is the homosexuality was a criminal offense this provision was provided in section 377 of the ipc indian penal code however in 2018 the supreme court struck down this provision and decriminalized homosexuality but the supreme court did not legalize same sex marriages at that time so several petitions were filed by the lgbtq plus community for the legality of same sex marriage but yesterday supreme court refused to provide legal status to the same sex marriage in india and the legal recognition to such marriage can only be granted by enacting the law so this is the current situation now moving on to say about the arguments for and against same sex marriage firstly we'll look at the favor arguments firstly legalizing the same sex marriage would reduce the social stigma faced by the lgbtq plus community and it will promote equality and inclusivity in society see currently the people of lgbtq plus community in india are facing several social and legal challenges the denial of same sex marriage aggravates these challenges rather than resolving it therefore if same sex marriage gets legalized in india it will allow the people of lgbtq plus community to obtain social recognition this in turn promotes equality and inclusivity in society secondly legalizing same sex marriage would have a positive impact on the mental health and well-being of lgbtq plus individuals see the lgbtq plus people in india are currently facing high rates of discrimination harassment and violence so legalizing same sex marriage will allow them to form legalized family which in turn promotes mental health and well-being of such community thirdly legalizing same sex marriage will help to fulfill the promises made in the constitution as we all know indian constitution guarantees equality and freedom to all citizens regardless of their sexual orientation by giving legality to the same sex marriages these principles in the indian constitution will be met by the government fourthly it would allow the homosexual people to get basic rights and privileges that are currently enjoyed by heterosexual couples for example a heterosexual couples in india are currently enjoying shared ration health and pension benefits 
apart from this they are also enjoying joint property rights so if india legalizes the same sex marriage it will allow the homosexual couples to obtain basic couple privileges these are all some of the important points for the same sex marriages now we'll see the arguments against the same sex marriages firstly such marriages undermines the traditional family values and the institution of marriage see in india marriage is considered as a sacred institution and marriage is defined as a union between a man and a woman so changing the definition of marriage to include same sex couples would undermine traditional value of our country apart from this the primary purpose of marriage which is to raise children cannot be fulfilled by the same sex couples this further creates difficulties secondly same sex marriage would have a negative impact on children who are adopted and raised by same sex couples see some of the opponents argue that children need both a mother and a father to have a well rounded knowledge but the same sex couples are more likely to have emotional and behavioral problems so it would be detrimental to the child's well being thirdly same sex marriage would lead to a breakdown of social norms see india is traditionally having a set of cultural and religious beliefs that are respected by many other countries so if india allows same sex marriage it would erode india's culture and religious traditions and finally allowing same sex marriage will bring hatred in the society as we all know majority of indian population does not support the same sex marriages as they believe that legalizing same sex marriage would affect traditional value of our country so this will bring a hatred mindset and it further encourages discrimination these are all some of the arguments against the same sex marriages so to conclude india is a democratic country where each and every individual of the country has certain basic rights including the right to choose sexual orientation so to promote equality and integrity the government should enact suitable legislation to address the concerns of homosexual couples Apart from this the society also should need to understand the feelings and emotions of LGBTQ+ community the society should change its mindset to live along rather than discriminating them so these are all some of the important points that i have to remember about same sex marriages with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article it talks about the debate of inclusion of the meithi community under scheduled tribes st list the article says that the proposal to include the meithi community in the st list has been already examined and rejected twice over the last four decades this information has not been publicly disclosed by the union government during the ongoing ethnic conflict in the state See this issue of granting ST status to the Meithi community has caused divisions and opposition among tribal groups in Manipur so the debate on this matter continues to be a sensitive issue in the region this is the crux of the news article given here in this context we will know what is the basic process of including a tribe under ST list and what are the benefits after inclusion in the list first we shall see the process of including tribes in the st list see initially the state government identifies the tribe that deserves st status then it recommends the list to the union government these recommendations are reviewed by the ministry of tribal affairs at the national level the reviewed recommendation are then sent to the registrar general of india for further evaluation and approval after this the national commission for scheduled tribe ncst verifies the recommendations to ensure their validity the ncst may conduct consultations with various stakeholders including the tribal community government agencies and experts So once approved by NCST the list is submitted to the president and his decision is final president may issue a notification for the inclusion of tribe by the powers vested in article 341 and article 342 so this is the overall process of including a tribe under ST list now we'll look into the benefits of inclusion under the ST list first is reservation in education see the st individuals have reserved seats in educational institutions ensuring better access to quality education it is ensured under article 15 clause 4 of indian constitution 
Next is reservation in employment. ST communities are provided with reserved positions in government jobs and services, including promotions. This is ensured under Article 16 of Indian Constitution. Then there are various safeguards for ST population under Article 244 along with the 5th and 6th schedule of the Constitution. These provisions safeguard the rights and promote the socio-economic development of scheduled tribe communities living in tribal areas. Finally is the political representation. See Article 243D ensures the reservation of seats for scheduled tribes in panchayats, promoting their participation in local governance. And Article 330 reserves a seat in the Lok Sabha for scheduled tribes, allowing their representation in the national parliament as well. So these are all some of the important points that I have to remember about the process of including tribes in the ST list and the benefits after inclusion in the list. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. According to the article, the Speaker of Lok Sabha referred the complaint against MP Mahua Moitra to the ethics panel. This complaint is called bribe for query. See here, the acquisition was that she was taking bribes from a businessman to ask questions in parliament. So this is the crux of the news article given here. So in this context, let us discuss about the powers of speaker from the preliminary perspective. So what are the sources of power of the speaker? See, the speaker derives power from three sources. They are Constitution of India, Rules of Procedure of Lok Sabha and Parliamentary Conventions. So now let's briefly see about the powers of speaker. See, with respect to the proceedings of the house, the powers of the speaker are firstly, as a presiding officer of the house, he or she maintains the order and decorum of the house. Know that this order is very important for the smooth conduct of business of the house. To ensure this, the speaker is made as the final authority with respect to any question of order and decorum. Secondly, the speaker adjourns the session of the house. Know that he or she can also suspend the meeting of the house in the absence of a quorum. Here quorum is nothing but a minimum strength of the house. Thirdly, the speaker does not vote in the first instance of a bill, but in case of a tie of votes, he or she can execute their vote. This is called as casting vote. Fourthly, he or she can preside over a joint session of the two houses of parliament. Know that the joint sitting happens when there is a deadlock of the bill between Lok Sabha and Rajesh Sabha. And finally, the most important power is that he is the final interpreter of the constitution, the rules of procedure of Lok Sabha and the parliamentary conventions within the house of Lok Sabha. Now, let us see the powers of speaker in case of money bills. See, firstly, the speaker decides whether a bill is a money bill or not. In this question, his decision on the bill is final and it cannot be challenged in any court of law. Moreover, the endorsement of the speaker is necessary when it is sent to Rajesh Abha or the president. Now, talking about the powers regarding anti-defection law, see the speaker decides on the question of disqualification of a Lok Sabha MP. This question will be generally under the anti-defection law under provisions of the 10th schedule. Now, regarding the parliamentary committees, the speaker appoints the chairman of all the parliamentary committees of the Lok Sabha. He also supervises the functioning of the committees. Know that the speaker is the chairman of the business advisory committee, the rules committee and the general purpose committee. These are all some of the powers of the speaker that you have to recall in prelims perspective. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice question discussion. Now take a look at this first question. This question is about Speaker of Lok Sabha. Statement 1 says the source of power of the Speaker is from the Constitution only. This statement is obviously incorrect because the Speaker derives power from Constitution of India, Rules of Procedure of Lok Sabha and Parliamentary Conventions. Statement 2 says the Speaker appoints the Chairman of all committees of the Parliament. This statement is incorrect because he can appoint only members of the Lok Sabha, not the entire Parliament. Statement 3 says the decision of the speaker on the money bill is final and cannot be questioned in any court of law. This statement is also incorrect.
it is open to judicial review since other case verdict of supreme court okay so the correct answer here is option d none none of the statements are correct here moving on in the process of inclusion of tribes in the scheduled tribe list in india what is the role of the registrar general of india so the correct answer here is option c reviewing and approving the recommendations it is the role of registrar general of india when it comes to the process of inclusion of tribes in the scheduled tribe so here the correct answer is option c now moving on look at this question three statements are given first statement says algal bloom are always red this statement is actually incorrect algal bloom are not always red now statement 2 says growth of cyanobacteria can lead to formation of algal bloom this statement is correct third statement says algal blooms increases the biological oxygen demand of the water body this statement is also correct so the correct answer for this question is option b only two because the first statement is incorrect moving on look at this question which type of landslide is characterized by a slow down slope movement of soil and rock material often triggered by heavy rainfall and saturation of the ground the correct answer here is option d creep so the questions displayed here are the main practice questions for you today just go through the question try to answer it in the comment section with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel thank you for listening